What does it mean to be born again? It's common to hear those who profess faith in Jesus refer to themselves or others as being born again. But more importantly, we can even read of the scriptures referring to this idea of being born again and a new birth. Now, from a physical perspective, the idea of being born again is absurd. However, it is something that is essential spiritually for your salvation. So it's something that we really need to understand and we want to look at in uh, this study. What does it mean to be born again? Number one, you must be born again. The Bible speaks of being born again in more than one passage. John chapter 3, verses 3 through 7 is probably the most common, commonly known of those. And this passage teaches Jesus, or records Jesus' teaching about the necessity of being born again. Jesus replied to Nicodemus, Truly I tell you, unless someone is born again, he cannot see the kingdom of God. How can anyone be born when he's old? Nicodemus asked him. Can he enter his mother's womb a second time and be born? Jesus answered, Truly I tell you, unless someone is born of water and the Spirit, he cannot enter the kingdom of God. Whatever is born of the flesh is flesh, and whatever is born of the Spirit is spirit. Do not be amazed that I told you that you must be born again. So Jesus even tells Nicodemus that unless you experience this new birth, then you're not going to enter, you're not going to see the kingdom of God. Then, Peter, when he wrote to those who had already become Christians and were in a saved spiritual condition, he said that they had been born again. 1 Peter chapter 1, verses 22 through 25 says, Since you have purified yourselves by your obedience to the truth, so that you show sincere brotherly love for each other, from a pure heart, Love one another constantly, because you have been born again, not of perishable seed, but of imperishable, through the living and enduring Word of God. For all flesh is like grass, and, it's, and all its glory like a flower of the grass. The grass withers and the flower falls, but the Word of the Lord endures forever. And this word is the gospel that was proclaimed to you. So, clearly, the scriptures demonstrate that being born again is necessary to share in God's kingdom and to have eternal life in heaven. So, you must be born again. But next, we must think about why you must be born again. This new birth is necessary to entering the kingdom of heaven because the old person, the one who has already been born physically, has, been, has become corrupted by sin. For example, this person has been guilty of many sinful things in pursuit of the desires of the flesh, all of which will keep people out of the kingdom of God. Galatians chapter 5, verses 19 through 21 shows us this, right? All these works of the flesh that are described in this passage. Sexual immorality, moral impurity, promiscuity, idolatry, sorcery, hatred, strife, jealousies, outbursts of anger, selfish ambitions, dissensions, factions, envy, drunkenness, carousing, and anything similar. He says, I'm warning you about these things, as I warned you before, that those who practice such things will not inherit the kingdom of God. So the scriptures teach the necessity of putting this old person who has been corrupted by sin to death in order that a new person who is created in God's image can be put on. Ephesians chapter 4 verses 22 through 24 tells us that we must take off the former way of life, the old self that is corrupted by deceitful desires. We must then be renewed in the spirit of our minds and to put on the new self, the one created according to God's likeness in righteousness and purity of the truth. You could also read Colossians 3 verses 1 through 17 on this point. 
This is essential because sin has separated you from God, as Isaiah 59 verses 1 and 2 describes. Romans 6 verse 23 tells us the wages of our sin is death, the separation, the spiritual separation from God, while the gift of God is eternal life in Christ Jesus our Lord. And the sin will result in you heading to hell, spending eternity in the fires of hell. Revelation 21, verse 8. But then, as we think about what it means to be born again, there are two elements involved in this new birth. When Jesus taught Nicodemus about the new birth in John 3, verses 3 through 7, Nicodemus did not understand how it was possible for someone to enter his mother's womb and be born a second time. However, Jesus was not talking about a second physical birth. Instead, he was talking about being born again with a spiritual rebirth. And he says to do that required two things, two elements. First, this new birth requires water. Now, the only water the scriptures teach as being involved in being spiritually reborn is the water of baptism. As one is to be baptized. One is to be immersed in water for the forgiveness of his or her sins. For example, in Mark 16 and verse 16, Jesus says, whoever believes and is baptized will be saved, but whoever does not believe will be condemned. In Acts 2 and verse 38, Peter replied, repent and be baptized, each of you, in the name of Jesus Christ for the forgiveness of your sins and you will receive the gift of the Holy Spirit. You can also read Acts 22, verse 16, to see the same point. Galatians 3, verse 27, about being baptized into Christ. And then 1 Peter 3, verses 20 and 21. In verse 20, it talks about how during the days of Noah, through um, that, that in the ark, a few, that is eight people, were saved through water. And then verse 21 says, baptism, which corresponds to this now saves you, not as the removal of dirt from the body, but the pledge of a good conscience toward God through the resurrection of Jesus Christ. In fact, this baptism is pictured as being the burial that stands between the old person who was corrupted by sin and the new person who is living for Christ. If you look at Romans 6, verses 3 and 4, he says, Or are you unaware that all of us who were baptized into Christ Jesus were baptized into his death? Therefore, we were buried with him by baptism into death, in order that just as Christ was raised from the dead by the glory of the Father, so we too may walk in newness of life. So you cannot get from that old person corrupted by sin to the new person living for Christ without baptism. It stands between the two. So this new birth requires the water of baptism. Second, this new birth requires the Spirit. The Holy Spirit works in turning us from the old person to the new person. Peter demonstrates that he does this through the gospel's message that he has revealed, not in some mystical, mysterious kind of way. 1 Peter 1, verses 22 through 27, again, that they had been born again, he says in verse 23, not of perishable seed, but of imperishable. What is that imperishable seed? The living and enduring word of God. The gospel of Jesus Christ contained in the New Testament. So hearing God's saving message, the gospel, the good news, results in those who desire to be saved believing and obeying what God instructs of them. To be born again, the Spirit has said that one must hear God's word, Romans 10 verse 17. Believe in Jesus, John chapter 8 verse 24. Repent of sin, Acts 2 verse 38. Confess Christ, Romans 10, verses 9 and 10, and be baptized, 1 Peter 3 and verse 21. Then, the Spirit requires a continual life 
of faithfulness to Jesus, Revelation chapter 2 and verse 10. So, this new birth requires these two elements of the waters of baptism and the Spirit as He works through the Word that He has inspired in the pages of the New Testament. But then, consider the results of this new birth. When an individual is obedient to the word of truth revealed in the New Testament concerning salvation, he or she is born again. And then, two things will happen for those who have been reborn. First, they will live a changed life. They will be focused on living according to the ways of God rather than the desires of the flesh. 2 Corinthians 5 and verse 17 says, Therefore, if anyone is in Christ... He is a new creation. The old has passed away. And see, the new has come. You can see this transformation in Galatians 5, verses 16 to 26, and Colossians 3 and verse 17. So, there will be a new creation, a new life. Second, they will be given eternal life in heaven. As long as they remain faithful to Christ and live according to this new spiritual life, they are living with the promise of having an eternal inheritance in the kingdom of heaven. 1 Peter chapter 1, verses 3 and 4 says, Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ. Because of His great mercy, He has given us new birth into a living hope through the resurrection of Jesus Christ from the dead, and into an inheritance that is imperishable, undefiled, and unfading, kept in heaven for you. And you can go on and keep reading about that down through verse 9. So in conclusion, if you want to be part of God's kingdom and be saved eternally, you must be born again If you want to be born again, you must be born of the water and the Spirit. And then, if you are born again, you will live in a transformed way that is patterned after God's holiness and be saved eternally in heaven.